Hey, it's time for VoiceOver Body Shop. How's everybody doing out there this week? Our guest tonight is Mark Cashman. Hi, hey, Mark. How are you doing, guys? We're hey. doing great. We're going to talk about you. your 10, at least 10 tips to better your voiceover career and your performance. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, and 10 tips, 10 tips. Uh, I, you know, when Dan, when you asked me the other day to, to do this, I, I just grabbed the first 10. Um, <laughs> for, for well, we'll go over you, That'll be fine. Who aren't familiar with uh, with my tips? I post a voiceover tip every day, one a day, on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and I post one every single day for 365 days in the entire year. So, all right, are you guys ready for this? Can you take 10 tips? And if you got a question, throw it in the chat room. We'll get to that as well. Absolutely. Time for voiceover yeah. body shop. Yeah, yeah. Right what now. I was going to do was was uh, uh, do a tip, and then we just discuss. Right. right. But, but we got to do the intro to the show first. Oh, that's right. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Right now. Okay. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, the home of Harlan Hogan's signature products. Source Elements, the folks who bring you Source Connect, JMC Demos, when quality matters. VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your voice actor website shouldn't be a pain in the butt. VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for voiceover success. And by World Voices, the Industry Association of Freelance Voice Talent. And now, here's your hosts, Dan and George. Well, hello there. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. B.S. All right. Well, Mark Cashman is going to join us, and uh, we're going to have a great time. If, again, if you have a question for our guest, throw it in the chat room. I know Jeff Holman is sitting in there, writing it down, typing it yeah, is with his little stenographer thing, and we're going to get all those questions <laughs> right to us in just a little bit. But we got 10 tips we want to cover with, with Mark. But let me introduce our guest. Mark Cashman is an award-winning radio and TV commercial producer, as well as a working voice actor. I've seen him work. Uh, and as vice president of Cashman Commercials, he's won over 150 advertising awards and is a veteran voice actor with experience in radio, TV, commercials, film dubbing, animated series, video games, and over 200 audiobooks. I didn't take a breath at the beginning of that. And he authored one of the best-selling books on voice actor, VO, Tips, Tricks, Tools, and Techniques to Start and Sustain Your VoiceOver Career. Let's welcome back to our show our good friend, Mark Cashman. Mark, welcome back. Thank you, gentlemen. And I do use that term loosely. Yeah, we figured you <laughs> would. But anyway, so you, we were we were talking about the fact that you have these 10 tips. And I have 365. You, 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 well, we're going to talk about that. But you, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. One, one for every day of the week. Yeah. 52 no, weeks of the year. Every day of the year. Yeah. Every day of the year. Right. Every day of the week, every day of the year. Absolutely. Do you, yep. do you have 366 and I have actually, during a leap year? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I did 366. Absolutely. That was in uh, 2020. <laughs> Way back in 2020, that was a leap year. So which tip did you have to leave out for the you next know, year? No, it wasn't. I, had, I didn't have to leave. Oh, you know, that's 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 a good question. So it's what tip did I add it's on 366? And I can't remember. Oh, um, okay. <laughs> the, hardest, the hardest thing of coming up with 365 different tips was to make sure I wasn't duplicating. And that's yeah. not easy. That right. is not easy. Yeah. Not easy at all. I had a couple of editors to go back and, and a couple of people said, oh yeah, you kind of said this. Oh, okay. <laughs> all okay. right. Never mind. Something, Absolutely. but at least I had editors. I had help. I have to have help. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's start off here. Let's start off. All right. Number one. Number don't, one. I'm, yeah, yes. Don't race through the first sentence in any well-written copy. And by the way, not all of it is. Uh, the first sentence usually sets up the whole rest of the story. Splain. Again, the first sentence in any well-written story sets up the whole rest of the story. So if you race through the first sentence, the listener is going to say, what, 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 what was that saying? What, what did you say? What, what? 
don't race through the first sentence of any story you tell, whether it's a commercial, narration, audiobook, I don't care what it is. Don't race through the first sentence. It why do people, why do people do that, though? You know, yeah, it's like uh, they're, no, they're in a hurry to finish up. I maybe guess. they're in a hurry or they don't think they're going to get done. But still, the bottom line, no matter what kind of story you're telling, don't race through the first sentence. When does a voice actor have to be really worried about speed? So like, you know, a commercial. Well, yeah. The only time is when they're doing a commercial. Commercials are the only part of voice acting that's timed to the second. Fives, tens, fifteens, thirties, forty-five, sixties, and every variation thereof. You're mm -hmm. timed to the second because advertisers buy time on the air. That's the only part of voice work that's timed. Everything else is not. So go, no going in. If you don't mind the pressure, the added pressure of timing, in addition to everything else you got to do, if you don't mind that, commercials are for you. Do you recommend a having a visual timer, an actual counting timer on screen or no, on a, no, anything like that, while you're that, reading? That's crazy. No, because that's artificial. Yeah. It's, it's kind of like uh, watching your waveform as you're recording, which is just right. a little bit uh, mind boggling. Right, so right. Um, um, unless you have this perfect synthesis of left brain and right brain, which most people <laughs> don't have. That no. said, that said, no, what you do is, and first of all, if you're in a directed session, the other the people at the other end, they're going to have the stopwatch. Uh -huh. you have to prepare. You just have to get your timing down before. You have to know what 30 seconds is, what 30 seconds feels like. And you just have to, I call it getting in touch with your inner stopwatch. Time yeah. yourself. Time yourself. Practice timing yourself. Practice feeling what 15 feels like, 30 feels like, 60 feels like. After a while, you'll get it. You'll, you'll get in touch with that inner stopwatch. And so when you do a take and they say, okay, George, uh, you, that came out to 56. We, 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 we're, we, need, we need you to be out of 59 and a half. And you say, oh, okay, okay, got it. And then you do another, and then Dan does a take and they say, good take, Dan, but uh, that came out to uh, 67. Uh, you're going <laughs> to shave off eight seconds off that next read. Yeah, How goes, about shaving off seven seconds of copy? <laughs> uh, that, that, well, that's the other thing, too. Is it Can many, you tell them to do that? <laughs> spots are, are overwritten, but we'll get into that another time. <laughs> but the bottom line for, for, for tip number one, don't race through the first sentence. Just don't, Alrighty. because it sets up the whole rest of the story. Um, okay. That said, number two. George, you want to take number two? Have you got the list or is Dan have that? Absolutely. I, I have right it there. on the screen right yeah. here. I just have to scroll up to it. There we go. Yeah. Um, the next one is reformat commercial copy. Make each sentence flush left. Easier to read. Plus, you don't have to deal with big paragraphs or line breaks. That's why God invented word processing. It's because, so what you do is when you get any kind of a, a script that's in a justified graph, a block of what I call a cluster fuck of text in a box. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. When you get that, I want you to take your word processor and I want you to reformat the copy so that one, every line is flush left. Every line starts a new thought. And you also make sure that that font is minimally 14 point font. Here's a little trick. Here's another little tip that I didn't even put down here. The larger the font, the less mistakes you make. Hmm. That's, that's a tip you can take to the bank. The larger the font, the less mistakes you make. Because the larger the font, the easier it is for your brain to read and the less mistakes you make. Just think of the very first sentence you ever read when we were in kindergarten. See Dick run. It was in 20 point. Times New Roman. It was monstrous. It was huge. Mm -hmm. That's how we learn to read. The larger the font, the less mistakes you make. And of course, <laughs> the larger the font, the less mistakes you make when you're getting older and your eyes are getting worse. <laughs> it's so, like, it tends to be a problem. It's like, I, it's like, like just stretch it out on the iPad there right. and make it a little bigger. Now, here's so, the reason it, I want you to do every line flush left, because when you right. do that, what happens at the end of the day, at the end of the story, you have a lot of white space, white space on your page. Our brains love white space. It allows us to pick out all the black symbols on that page and really understand them well with white space. Our brains love it. I can get, that's a, again, that's proven over and over again. If you flip through a magazine and you just flip through pages just randomly, your eyes will linger on two things. One, faces, because we're hardwired for faces, and two, white space. The more open a thing is, our brains go, oh, thank you. 
So the more open your script is, your brain will navigate through that copy so much more easily. In particular, if you're anywhere on the dyslexic spectrum, if you have any problems with dyslexia or anything related to that, the larger the font, the more white space, the easier it is to read. Every line flush left. Guaranteed. It's guaranteed. You just break up that block, break up that brick, break up that justified graph of copy into something that's manageable, easily digestible. Let your brain, let it be, just be easy on your brain. Right. Yeah. If I it's a PDF, what, you can just select, you can usually select the text yeah. and copy and paste yes, it into absolutely, your absolutely. Word processor. Absolutely. It takes a little bit longer, but the prep is worth it because your performance will be so much better. Yeah. You know, or as my wife says, get trifocals, which I finally relented to do. And now every, and I can now, read everything perfectly. Mm -hmm. Remember the go. first time I, right. I hadn't done voiceover for a long time, about, about 22 years ago and stepped up to a podium to read some stuff for a demo. And I'm like, what the? What the <laughs> <laughs> That's what I knew. I needed glasses. That's, that's, that's anyway. Important. All right. Yeah, number no, three. Number three. Don't read when the copy is short. You can memorize a short line without reading. You'll sound authentic and conversational. So, for example, starts Thursday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course. That, that's it. Have you ever seen an actor go on stage in a play holding a script? No. Have you ever seen an actor in a movie go on camera holding a script? No. They're all off book. That's what actors do. Actors get off book. Actors memorize their lines because that is part of their job. Now, you might say, well, Mark, memorizing VO copy, that's kind of an oxymoron, isn't it? I mean, come on. But the thing is, why are actors on stage and on camera so believable? Because they're not. So whenever you have the opportunity to not read, take advantage. You, in most voice work, you don't have the opportunity to not read. In most voice work, the copy is so dense that taking your eyes off the page, good luck finding your way back. But commercial copy is one of the few areas where you can get your eyes off the page and you don't have to read. There are only two other areas where you have that ability. Animation, where you're doing all these different sides and different lines, lines, hey, Bobby, give me that ball. You don't need to read that. And video games as well, where you have individual lines, single lines, where you can look at the line and then say the line without reading. And that's the thing with, with most commercial copy, 30 seconds of mm. copy, it's only got, you know, maybe 20, 25 seconds. Of, I mean, 30 second spots only got 20 to 25 seconds of words. And they're all short, short phrases. Do you really need to read them? Starts Thursday. Do you need to read that? If that's an <laughs> announcement, but I'm talking about just any other thing. Right. So whenever you have the opportunity to get off the page, get off the page. Because it answers the age old question, how do you sound like you're not reading? Don't Memorize. Read. Yeah. Don't read. So, so could you possibly just like read the line several times as you're recording it? And that way you're, you're not only are you memorizing it, but you're going back and you, you're saying it several different ways that way. All I'm saying is look at the first line of, of tip number three. What's it say? Don't read when the copy is short. Do you need to read that now? Now you can look at me and say, don't read when the copy is short. Don't read when the copy is short. Right. Don't read when the copy is short. Again, don't. you don't need to read that line. You've now memorized that line. Your short-term memory is intact. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> exactly. I always say, look, unless you've got mild cognitive impairment or you just drank a half a bottle of Jack Daniels or you just took a huge bong rip, you can remember, don't read when the copy is short. I'm sorry, but you, again, there are many odd instances in commercial copy when you just don't need to read. Stop reading and be an actor. You're a voice actor. Be an actor. Acting. Okay. Number right. four. Number four. Uh, Ad lib a short backstory before you perform commercial copy. It helps you frame the story and warms you up before you dive in. Of course. Absolutely. I always make a distinction between voiceover and voice acting. Voiceover is 2.9% APR financing for 60 months on all vehicles in stock. There's no acting involved in that. You're a voice actor. If an actor does, understands who they are and where they are and who they're talking to. That's what all believable acting is all, is, is, is all about and has been about from the very beginning. 
So you need to know who you are, where you are, and who you're talking to. You need to know why you're saying what you're saying. You need to give yourself a reason to say what you're saying. And that reason isn't, I'm a voice actor behind a microphone doing an audition to send it to my agent. That's off the table. That's, that's, that's just artificial. You have to be an actor. An actor understands who they are, where they are, and who they're talking to. The definition of acting, if you boil down to its essence, is what Stella Adler and Sanford Meisner said. It's behaving truthfully in an imaginary situation. Mm -hmm. That's what acting is all about. Yeah. So therefore, we have to understand that when we are telling a story, we are actors. And we have to figure out who we are in that story, where we are, and who we're talking to. Once you can understand those three questions, you understand the story. And you have every right to tell it. But if you don't understand those three questions, you don't understand the story. And you have no right to tell it. So you can like imagine I'm somebody that's going to be talking to this class about this. That's and exactly right. so, so have you ever been in class before? And the, you know, that sort of thing. That's so exactly it, right. All right. That's exactly that's right. right. Understand who you are, where you are, and who you're talking to. What was your pre-life? Why are you saying what you're saying? Frame the story. And then you can tell anything to anyone, anywhere, anytime. All righty. Uh, if you're just joining us, we're with Mark Cashman and we're going over tips, simple tips to just better your career and better your performance style and all the things that go with it. If you have a question for Mark, you can throw it in the chat room of wherever it is you're watching it, whether you're watching it on Facebook Live, whether you're watching it on YouTube, whether it's just sort of snowing down outside your house and you're hearing little bits and pieces through the ether. Write a question down and put it in the chat room, and Jeff Holman will get that to us. Number five another on our top ten this week. Uh, who is it? You or me, George? Your turn. My turn. Okay. Number five. Take a few minutes to warm up your voice. Stretch your facial muscles or your facial muscles. Do tongue twisters. Sing to oxygen eight and hydrate all the things you just did not do before you started I, before i started saying show, that exactly. exactly no well, i'm only kidding well, i'm and, all and warmed yeah. up we've been doing this show for another yeah, hour so. yeah and then this is just the this is the most practical you know, thing again you want to before you go running you're going to stretch before you go to the workout you're going to stretch before you do anything uh that, that where you're in a performance mode you're going to stretch and your facial muscles are are definitely one of them and um and that's an and, and, and adjunct, a corollary to this is just is also uh, the opposite. Um, when you after you've done your performance and you're in front of your computer, your monitor and you're doing your editing and stuff like that, get up every 20 minutes and get your eyes off the screen, off the screen, off the screen and get up also and start walking around and get uh, and start sitting because you're sitting to death. So those three things warm up before you perform. But after you perform, just keep in mind, don't be in front of that monitor for more than 20 minutes at a time. Get up and get your, give your eyes a rest and break and get up and give your hips a break and your back a break and everything else like that. Okay. Right. It's, it's all physical things to do before and after your performance to keep, just to keep mindful. Yeah. Uh, what, what's, what's your favorite warm up exercise, Mark? The NBC announcer test. Um, uh, it, and anybody can find the NBC announcer test by going online, just write in the NBC announcer test. And it was one duck, two, the swan, three, da, 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 four, yes, four, squawking geese. Remember. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah, no, yeah, no. Yeah, that's, yeah. That, that, that's, <laughs> that's another that's one. song. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, um, but the NBC announcer test was a test that they gave announcers back in the, in the forties and the fifties to see if they were good enough to be announcers for, on national NBC TV. The NBC announcer test. I, I, I see George is, is is checking it out right now, and and George, what do they give you there? This was a test that they gave all announcers who wanted to apply to be announcers on NBC, and um um and then after and then of course all the other stations, all the other um, stations that did the same Follow. test. And so George, what does it say? What's what's the copy say? One hen, two ducks, three squawking geese. Four limerick oysters, five corpulent porpoises, six pairs of Don Alverzo's tweezers, seven thousand Macedonians in full battle, full battle array. array, eight brass <laughs> monkeys from the ancient sacred crypts of Egypt, 
Nine, apathetic, sympathetic, diabetic, old men on roller skates with a marked propensity toward prasti- procrastination. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and sloth. And sloth. And lastly, yeah. 10 lyrical, spherical, diabolical denizens of the deep who all stall around the corner of the quo and the quay of the quivery all at the same time. Now, now, so those are the 10 things that they go, but the thing is you have to do one, then one, two, then one, two, three, then one, uh-huh. two, three, four, then one, two, three, four, five, then one, two, three, four, five, six. And, yeah. and, and, and so, so that's basically what you had to do. If you could pass that test and you could articulate every single word, they said, okay, that's the baseline. Mm-mm. Now read this. And then they give you news, you know, AP, AP uh, wire things and all sorts of stuff that they, that they had there. But, mm. the, but the NBC announcer test was the baseline for any, if, if you couldn't get through that, you're out. You're not even being considered. Mm. The NBC right. announcer test. Great, wow. great warm up. And, um, um, and then, of course, there's another unbelievable one that'll completely blow your mind. It's called the chaos. The chaos, <laughs> C-H-A-O-S. And it is an exercise, it's a nightmare exercise in English and all the different English words that you weren't even sure you knew. If you can get through that, you can get through anything. All righty. The chaos. So that wow. said, so let's see, we think, uh, so number six, number six, I think that's George. George, your turn. <laughs> uh, mark your copy and pencil, not pen and keep the mark simple <laughs> so you can navigate through the text easily and consistently. And of course, this has been updated uh, because that was written in the 21st and 20th century. And now we have the 21st century. So we have tablets with styluses. We have uh, entire monitors with the, that you can write on. Um, and of course, a lot of people are very, very adept at editing on the fly with, let's say, a Google Doc or something like that. So it's whatever is most convenient for you, whatever is whatever format that you can mark your copy easily and quickly. That's the key. That's the key. You have to be able to mark your copy. Your mark, the marks on your copy are navigational marks. I always mark. I always liken marks the navigational marks on copy to buoys in the water when we're doing, when we're driving a motorboat. When you're driving a motorboat, you have these buoys in the water that tell you where you can drive the boat, that's safe to drive the boat. If you go outside the buoys, what's going to happen? You're going to run the boat aground. Same thing with marking on your copy. You ignore the marks on your copy. You run the performance, the story aground. So you mark your copy to remind you. And the marks are very, very simple, extraordinarily simple. They need to tell you just two basic, basic things, and all the rest are frills. Two basic things are emphasis and timing. Emphasis in that you have to make sure that you emphasize the correct words in the story that you're telling. You have to understand what the subject is and obviously (laughs) emphasize that. Points you're trying to make, you emphasize things. So emphasis is extraordinarily important. And all you need is a simple underline to underline the word you want to emphasize. Very, very simple. You're going to take that same shape line, which is now horizontal, and you're going to turn it this way, diagonal, and that's going to tell you where to take a beat. You need to take a beat. You got to find places to take a beat. I always joke that I never met an actor who didn't like to take a dramatic beat. But you always have to want to try to find a beat. You always want to give the listener a rest. If you don't find take a beat, the listener, you're just going to be talking on and on and on and on and on and on. Do you know that there's a 12-step program for people who talk incessantly? <laughs> there is? Yeah, well, talk, well, well, I know a bunch of people who should take that. <laughs> take That's a right. damn breath already. That's right. <laughs> it's a 12-step program. It's called On and On and On. <laughs> Thank you. We're here all week. Try the deal. So that Didn't said, do. you got to mark your copy to remind you where to, take, where, where, to, where to stress, where to emphasize, and where to take a beat. Everything else is extra it's it's embellishment it's uh, your hieroglyphics however you want to do it you want to remind yourself to to lift a particular word and you'll put an arrow if you want to descend on another word you'll put a downward arrow you'll make your own hieroglyphics but your marks are really really extraordinarily important because your marks keep you consistent from take to take to take and if you are inconsistent from take to take to take the listen the director is going to tear what little hair they have left out of their head (laughs) All righty. All right. So, get, so mark get, your copy. Mark, mark, mark your copy. By the way, if you say my name three times fast, I'll, you'll sound like a hair-lipped dog. 
Mark, 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 not that with I, my dog all the time. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was doing it last night with Mishka. I'm like, it's very tasty. <laughs> and she was like, what? God only knows what I was saying to her. Anyway, number Please. seven. <laughs> yeah. Number seven. I think that's yours, Dan. It is. Yeah. Your smile is the promise of a good experience. When people hear you smile, they think they'll enjoy it too. Absolutely. Every advertiser, the smart advertisers, leave the listener want to leave the listener their goal is to leave the listener with what they call a positive emotional response a positive emotional response so when you're smiling you're telling the listener you had a good experience with it they will assume that they will too but if they don't hear a smile <laughs> they will assume that you didn't have a good experience with it and they probably won't either so that's why i say your smile is the promise of a good experience when you're smiling about talking about the benefits of a product or service, when you're smiling, their listener is basically saying, oh, maybe I'll have a good experience with this too. All right. When and if you smiling, don't have a smile, they'll think doo -doo -doo. that way too. All right. Number eight, Mr. Whittem. Yeah. Every spot is an invitation to try a specific product or service. Always invite folks in, particularly on the tagline at the end. Absolutely. Particularly on at the tagline, on the tagline at the end. So every single time, particularly on that tag, you're always saying to the listener, come on in, you'll like it here. Good to see you. Come on in. You're always welcoming. You're always inviting them in. That is the, that's what's underneath everything you say. Everything you say. You're inviting them to try the product, inviting them to listen, inviting them to see, inviting them in. And it's got to be sincere. It has to be sincere. As they say in Hollywood, always be sincere, even if you don't mean it. Thank you. We're here always <laughs> trying to be <laughs> what's, what's a good way to sound sincere? What's a, what's a, a good technique for that? Be sincere. Yeah. yeah. Even if you're not sincere. Even if you're not sincere. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, um, uh. Fred Allen. Uh, also said, if you took all the sincerity in Hollywood and you jammed it into a flea's navel, you'd still have enough room for two caraway seeds and an agent's heart. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that said, no, no, you, again, how do you sound sincere? Be sincere. I'm sorry, but the, but but that's the, I, I know it sounds very facile, but it's it's just that simple. Be sincere. Don't sound phony. All righty. And, no. and, and, and uh, Penny Abshire had a wonderful, wonderful tip. The, the classic, the most classic tip in the world in voice work, and everybody's heard it. Tell me, don't sell me. Absolutely. Just tell me. Just tell me. That's all you got to do. And be sincere. Number nine? Number, Number nine, nine. I think that's George's. Number nine? No, it's mine, actually. Oh, it's your, oh, oh that's right. That's right. Yeah. We're going. Okay. Yeah, yeah, right. This is a great one, because I, I actually do this one. Uh, ask three story related questions mm -hmm. to understand what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Who That's am right. I? Where am I? And C, who am I talking to? Absolutely. And then I usually add, when am I talking to them? And that sort of thing. Does it really Why? matter when? Yeah, it can, you know, maybe it's the middle of the night. It might be the middle of the night, but is that normally, is that, nor is that, does that normally happen? No, it doesn't. And most when, unless it's very story specific, when is, is just one thing you don't have to worry about. But who, where, and what? Yes, absolutely. And you can always find out what you're talking about if you just find the subject. I always remind my students, the formal subject of any story is the name of the product, the name of the company. That's the formal subject. Find the subject. Once you find the subject, then you can tell the story. You know what exactly what it is you're talking about. If the spot's for colonial life, but they talk about employee benefits, then the subject is employee benefit. Know what you're talking about and you'll under, be able to understand and tell the story. But again, actors on stage and on camera, they have a process where they're in rehearsal for their play or their movie. And it's a process that they call, that's called discovery. They discover everything about their character that they're portraying. They discover why their character says, says what they say, what their, their character's relationship is to the other characters in the story. The story arc the character goes through from the beginning of the play to the end of the play or film, they understand they've discovered everything about their character. They understand why they're saying what they're saying. Voice actors think that they don't have to go do that. 
do that process. You do. If you call yourself an actor, you have to do discovery. Absolutely. Once again, we're with Mark Cashman. If you have a question for Mark, throw it in the chat room. Jeff Holman's there. He's writing them all down and getting them to us. And we'll be able to ask him that. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and George, you have number 10. You do. A lot of copies sings. Uh, Find the music, the key and the cadence in copy, and you'll hit all the right notes. That's right. Find oh. the music in copy. I find that a lot of my super successful students are musical. They learned, they were singing in the choir, they were singing in the car, they were, they played piano, they learned how to play guitar, they were musical. Now, does that mean that you have to be musical to be successful in this business? No, but you still have to have a goddamn good ear. And you have to at least be, well, I guess, not tone deaf, right? So bottom line is, if you are musical, you have an advantage in this business. If you're not musical, and th th then you're going to be doing more what I call left brain stuff. You're going to be doing more directional uh, uh, knowledge as opposed to um, uh, musical knowledge that you, that you can apply. But if you're musical, everything in music is in copy with one exception. Everything in music, keys, sharps, flats, whole notes, half notes, quarter notes, dotted notes, rests, pianissimo, forte, legato, staccato, everything in music is in copy with one exception, and that is time signature. We do not talk in a steady beat. We talk in a cadence. We talk in an ebb and a flow. We get fast. We get slow. We stutter. We s stammer. We do all sorts of things, but we don't talk in a rhythm. But everything else in, co in music is in copy. And if you're musical, find it. Find the keys, find the notes, find the cadence. If you're not musical, listen. Remember what you guys were talking about with the Q&A before? How do I develop my ear? Listen, listen, listen. Listen to people you admire. Listen to people you respect. Listen to people you look up to and say, oh my God, if I could be one fraction as good as this person, I'd be happy. Listen, be inspired. Listen and listen to the music because some of the most Amazing voice actors you you hear and say, wow, Mike Rowe, perfect example. Everybody loves Mike Rowe, Dirty Jobs, Mike Rowe, beautiful voice, beautiful baritone. Everyone says, wow, what an amazing uh, narrator. He was an opera singer. Oh. He was an opera singer before he got into narration. That's what I'm saying. If you're a singer, if you're musical, you're going to be able to do, you're going to have, you have a leg up. You have an advantage over those who are non. Absolutely. We're with Mark Ashman. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to get to your questions. You can still throw them in the chat room. So throw them in there right now. So uh, stay tuned. We'll be right back and we'll talk a little bit more about good performance technique with Mark Ashman here on Voice Over Body Shop. Don't go away. This is Ariana Ratner and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. VOBS.TV. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Dickies, because I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values, a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. It's just you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. You know, I used to live in Buffalo, New York. But now, I'm in sunny Southern California. But no matter where you are, when you need equipment strictly for voiceover, there's only one place to go. And that's voiceoveressentials.com. 
And right now is the time to get with Harlan Hogan's signature series V01A voiceover microphone. They also have the fabulous Centrance MicPort Pro 2 with limiter in stock. In fact, it's the only version they sell. Now, a limiter is a must-have, especially when recording oneself with no engineer to ride game for you. By the way, it's the most amazing limiter they've encountered. It's impossible to detect, and it's incredibly quiet. And they've upgraded the Portabooth Pro Quick Script LED light. Now it has two goosenecks, all the better to read your script. Go on over to VoiceOver Essentials right now to get these great VoiceOver Essential products. Well, hey there, Hero. It's David H. Lawrence the 17th, and it's time. Yes, it's time. In fact, it's limited time. This week is the only week throughout the entire year that my huge VO Heroes Pro training program is available. The whole rest of the year, it's not. So if you want in, if you want me to help you create a satisfying and profitable and successful voiceover practice, I can't wait to help you. The bonuses are amazing. You get equipment, you get training. If you're here to figure out how to do better at your current voiceover practice or build a brand new one, I'd love to help you. All you have to do is go to voheroes.com slash go. That's voheroes.com slash go. Do so before the end of the week and I will see you inside the program. Hi, this is Bill Farmer, and you are watching Voice Over Body Shop. It's great. Welcome back. We're talking with Mark Cashman, author of VO, Tips, Tricks, Tools, and Techniques to Start and Sustain Your Voice Over Career. And uh, great book. I mean, I've been reading this one for since you first wrote it. Thank I got you. to read the galleys for it. So that that's was, right, you did because you you were you were kind enough to to give me a a, um, uh, a really nice testimonial. And um, I'm actually I'm working on the sequel. Um, oh. I I took a sabbatical this uh, this summer and uh, and just so I could start to try to finish this book by the end of the year. And um, the the title for the second book I'm going to uh, give it to you now. Nobody, this is the this is a first. This is an exclusive. Do we have to sign an NDA or anything? No, not okay. at all. VOBS. But the uh, uh, the title of my second book is V hyphen OMG. Exclamation oh, point. I like that. Yeah. So that's the that's the second book. Uh, hopefully, it'll um, I'll finish it by the end of the year, and it'll be out next year. And um, and then I'll also be doing the audiobooks of both my books. So uh, so twenty twenty three is going to be a, a real banner year. I've been working hard at it, and and so. I'll be debuting a lot of things next year. Excellent. All righty. Well, you ready for some questions from our oh, yeah. vast worldwide audience that is tuned in tonight? Oh, yes. Uh, absolutely. We'll start with Jeffrey Headquist. He says, uh, <laughs> Jeff, oh, I just spoke tips to for delivering the, hey, the guy next door conversational read. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, uh, what's funny is, is that a lot of, writers want the guy next door conversational read and the copy is not guy next door conversational copy unfortunately so that is a matter of just really working with a, a great acting coach who's going to be able to show you how to throw away a lot of copy uh, when we first got into this, uh, we were constantly taught to billboard this and billboard that and stuff like that and and highlight this part of the this benefit and that and, and, and all these copy points that they were doing. But uh, a lot of it now is uh, thrown away. And when I say thrown away, it's it's just not, again, again, not overly stressed or emphasized. And there's a lot of upspeak and a lot of copy. It depends upon, again, who's doing it. So overall, how do you get the conversational guy next door read? You listen and rehearse and listen and rehearse and listen and rehearse and work with a great, great acting coach, an acting coach who's going to be able to give you and help you get to be competitive with current reads that are on the air now. Guys who have beautiful, deep, resonant voices like Jeff, and uh, Jeff is a colleague and Jeff and I have known each other a long time, and I've, I've worked with Jeff, and uh, he's been on air and uh, off. 
just beautiful, beautiful speaking voice. A lot of uh, people in our business have to learn how to just relax and not sound as announcery as they used to. Yep. Especially it's not you, easy. It's not, I'm not you, saying it's easy. Yeah. Especially if you were an announcer. George, yeah. you get the questions. Uh, one question from Brad Avenue. You get number one. He says, hey, guys, here are a handful of questions from Mark. One, the first, based on your 25 years as voice talent and producer, what observations do you have about clients and producers you are working with? Yeah, both the good and the bad. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's interesting. I've been doing this for over 44 years, and I can literally count on one hand the number of assholes I've met in the industry cool. and worked with. Literally. Even maybe even less than one hand. Virtually, virtually everybody I work with in the business is smart, got a great sense of humor, super creative, and easy to work with. Why? Because they have a career and they want to continue working. So they want to make sure that they are easy to work with and that they're not assholes. So uh, the great thing about our business is is that uh, you see, we, we don't work for a boss. We don't have somebody dangling a paycheck over our heads every single week. And we can't tell the boss, screw you. But, but we're freelance talent. And if anybody disrespects us or anybody acts like an asshole, we say, fuck you. I don't want to work with you. That's it. And you just drop them as a, as, as a client. So the bottom line is we get to pick and choose who, we, who the people who we want to work with. We want to work with smart, creative people who are respectful, uh, uh, organized, uh, uh, professional, and, and aren't wasting our time and are going to pay us what we're worth. That's the people we want to work with. The other people who don't want to do that, we cut them out of our lives. We don't work with them. Does that oh, kind of answer your question? Yeah, that answers that one. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what was the Brad's, other ones? There were a couple of others? Yeah. Brad's second question, the GVA a rate, uh, has a great rate guide. Do you mm -hmm. spend time explaining business basics to clients? i.e. broadcast TV, digital radio project no. versus lower non -pro I mean, when I talk to people, I mean, I give them a whole lecture like, you know, there's, there's this tradition in Judaism. It's like if someone wants to convert, a rabbi has to say three times, are you sure you want to do this? <laughs> it's like a vampire inviting you in. That yeah. said, that said, um, uh, uh, rates, um, Look, there are after rates, there are GVAA rates, uh, uh, which a lot of uh, uh, people use for a lot of non-union uh, rates, which, which are terrific. So it's always, I, I'm, I'm glad that there are union rates because that sets a minimum. Here's what I want people to remember, uh, uh, voice actors to remember when they're do, putting a quote together and they're giving a client a, a price as to how much it's going to cost. They're not just buying you. They're not just buying your voice and your talent and your performance. They're buying three things. They're buying your voice, talent, slash performance. That's one thing. They're buying your studio time, which you put together, your entire studio, and all the equipment inside of it. They're renting that. That's the second thing they're buying. And the third thing they're buying is you as a producer, director, and editor. They're buying your editing time, your producing time, your production time. Talent, studio, production, they're buying three things. So when you give them a quote, you itemize the three things, let them know they're buying three things rather than one. All righty. You get number three there, Jorge. In preparation, lifts slash edit slash versions, question mark. Do you See, have a strategy for educating those clients and for getting them to consider consulting the GVAA when setting yeah. their voice budget? Yeah, that's that, that that's a uh, boy when you that's really getting into the weeds in terms of negotiations. And that's something that you need to get straightened out ahead of time before you even get into the studio. And that's why sometimes it's always good to have an agent because your agent can take care of that. All that stuff is technically what your agent is supposed to do is negotiate on your behalf. If you have to negotiate on your own behalf, you better be armed and ready to answer any questions and justify everything there and make it as clear as possible. If it's too complicated, sometimes it's just worth it to just, just walk away sometimes. Um, uh, d d d dealing with people who are uh, difficult to work with, sometimes it's just better to say, you know what, it's not worth my time, all this stuff going back and forth, whatever the case may be. If it is worth your time, you gotta figure out a way to make it clear and simple and stick to your guns. Absolutely. 
Grace Newton has a great question here. Uh, says, Grace. Mark, I remember you have specific thoughts on not punching the word and. <laughs> Will you share that with us? And, 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 and she continues. She says, I see a lot of copy where a sentence begins with a conjunction. Like, yeah, yeah, but. Always, always, always. How, always, always. how would you and, approach that? I, see, now, I, I, I see the word but, and I immediately change it to the word and. Oh, no, but and it's not a but and a but it's not an and. But, but no, a but better. a but is an exception. A but is a transition. A but is a tra is you're telling a story, da da, da 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 but and that's a transition point. So don't confuse ands and buts. But here is what you do with <laughs> ands, okay? And is not an important word. And is a preposition. This, 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 and this. So and sub uh, a sub uh, uh, and is going to be placed in two places in a sentence inside of a sentence which is a bridge this 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 and this and it becomes an ampersand or an n or an an you don't hear the and and when and starts a sentence you use and as a springboard and this and that and those and them and these not and those and those and these and them and this it's a springboard inside of a sentence it's a bridge the beginning of a sentence, it's a springboard. The exception, if the writer decides and asks you to hit the end, with her, either with italics, bold, underline, or caps, my pet peeve. That said, if the writer makes and important, you hit the end. If the writer doesn't make and important, you don't hit the end because and is not important. And most conjunctions and prepositions are not important and to but of with so from it i mean it goes on and on and on not so but that said it's not important and is not an important word unless the writer makes it important yeah and a lot of times people just you know when we're talking we just throw and away and you rarely hear the d on the end of and that's exactly what i'm saying yeah All and when way. you do say an and don't hit the d I rarely do. And I'm like, Good. I, sometimes I got to add the D in, which is <laughs> sometimes which yes. fun, fun, fun thing. Every to do so often editing. there'll be people who say, can you please articulate the word and? Okay, fine. All right. All right not Question fine. from D Bobo, George. <laughs> uh, he says, hi everyone. Mark, are you the voice of Menards? No, somebody else asked me that a couple of months ago and it's, um, it's my doppelganger. And, yeah. uh, and, and it's interesting as scientists have been uh, comparing doppelgangers and seeing that they actually have some similar DNA, even though they're not related. How do you like that? Fascinating. Well, that's the trip. All right. Ivan Sherry asks, Mark, would you please address how voicing auditions differs from voicing bookings? Uh-huh. <laughs> Well, they really shouldn't, should they? they? No, because, well, here's the thing. Okay. You do your audition. When you do your audition, if you are picked, that's what I call demo love. They fell in love with the demo. They fell in love with your audition. And all you have to do is reprise what you did in the audition. That's what they're expecting. That's why they picked you. So it's the easiest thing in the world to do the directed session because they picked you based on the audition. No pressure, nothing, unless the night before the session, they say, hey, Dan, uh, I, we've had big changes in the copy and just a whole different set of directions on the yeah, story. We've gone here. in another direction. <laughs> um, uh, we still want you, but, uh, but uh, can you come on, uh, you know, maybe a half an hour early so we can discuss? All right. That's rare. That's rare. Most of the time, 99% of the time, you do an audition, they pick you, you're going to reprise what you did in the audition, and they're going to be so happy. Yeah. Or even better, they use your audition. That's the <laughs> and best. Sti That's and the still best. pay you, you for an it. Audition. That's right. They do, you do an audition, and they say, hey, no need to do a directed session. We're going to use what you did on the audition. Yay, fuck, great. Just make sure you spell my name right on the check. <laughs> <laughs> Linda Joyce Miner. Uh, I, let's see here. Um, Linda, George. Hey Linda, how are you doing? I, she says, I've been in your classes when doing commercials. Talk to a person or to a group, she says in quotes. 
Hardly any copy is ever written talking one-on-one. -on -one. Hardly any copy in the world is written well enough to be considered realistically talking to one person. The overwhelming majority of all commercial copy, you are talking to a group of people. You're talking to a large audience of people, and you're just explaining everything about your product and service. It's that simple. It's that simple. Anybody who says to you, just pretend like you're talking to one person, I'm sorry, they don't know what they're talking about. The overwhelming majority of all commercial copy can be framed as presentational. You're presenting in front of a group. Always, always. Got to keep that in mind. You're not talking to one person. You're hardly ever talking to one person. Once in a blue moon, once in a blood red moon, will you ever have copy that you could realistically say, yeah, I could see talk telling this to one person. Because any other copy you'd say to one person, they'd look at you like you're off your meds. <laughs> and some of us are. Uh, Jay Horace Black has the last question. Mr. Black, how are this you doing all? Of hey, Mark, Dan, and George. This is uh, you mentioned having a welcome or try this mindset. What's the general approach for the announcer of radio TV spots? Approach for fast tags. Other than saying that, boy, there's a lot here. Other than saying them clearly and quickly, is there a general approach for legal fast tags? I've been getting a few auditions for these lately, and these specs, real guy with great legal skills. No pressure. <laughs> Just be cool, calm, collect it, and glide through with a brisk, upbeat, matter-of-fact vitality. Talk yeah, to what they said. Yeah, yeah, that's all you have to do is just do what they asked you to do, and then you'll be fine. Uh, you know, no, there's no, you know, other other than uh, than post and, and and doing a little, uh, you know, little you know time compression uh, uh, for a legal tag. Um, you're just going to go as quickly as you can possibly go, and 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 hope you don't go over. There's live announce live. Anybody who's on on the air is is people. It's funny. The snobs in our business say, oh, you're from radio. You don't. Oh, you'll never make it in voiceover. That's bullshit. Everybody who's on, on the air knows more in their pinky than most voice actors know in their whole body about articulation and projection and timing and, 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 and understanding what it is you're talking about and, and pace, everything. They understand everything. And then on top of it, they're in live, live in front of millions of people, millions of people. Well, nobody has, we don't have that kind of pressure when we're doing stuff. We have e-learning stuff. We're in our little studios, live announcers, people who are on the air. They, they are, they, they are killing it, man. They're doing so many millions of, they're multitasking beyond that microphone. So no, there's no trick for speaking a legal tag faster other than practicing. And just again, the NBC announcer test, if you can get through the NBC announcer test really, really quickly. It's like saying giggity. You know, Seth MacFarlane can say giggity 10 times in a row, 10 times in a row, flawlessly. You have that kind of vocal control, you can get through a legal tag quickly. All righty. Mark Cashman, author of VO. Thanks for being with us. If people want to get a hold of you, I know. If people want, where's your website? Let's see. Uh, Sue, where's his website? It should be right there somewhere. There it is. Cashmancommercials.com. There it is right there. And and Mark at Cashmancommercials.com, M-A-R-C, is my email address. People can contact me anytime. I'm around like a donut. And um, what else? What else? What else? Uh, uh, again, I'm planning on having my book out next year, so anticipate that. I can't and um, you guys, how many years now? Have you been at that? 11 and a half, 11 and a half years. It is right now. It is such a well-oiled machine. It's scary, but it is so entertaining. You guys put together so much stuff and so in such a short amount of time and you give everybody a reason to keep on contributing, which is great. Thanks, Mark. We appreciate it. Good work. Congratulations. Right, Congratulations. And thank you. I'm honored to be on your show anytime. And we're always honored to have you. Thanks. Alrighty. We'll be right back and wrap things up into a nice, tight little ball right after Take this. care, guys, and thanks for your questions. Before time began, there was VOBS.TV. Watch or else. In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. 
When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, voiceactorwebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. It's that time of the show where we talk about source elements. The creators of Source Connect, which is a tool for pros who want to record voice actors all around the world. That can't be in the studio. And of course, that's been a big part of life for the last couple of years, not being able to be physically in the studio. The beauty of this technology now is that a lot of the work that could have only been done by actors locally in the city or where the studio is can now be cast and, and be performed by actors any place. And that's a huge, pl huge pro of having tools that are this well-respected, this reliable, and sound this good. You know, the fact that now voice actors can do the kind of work that traditionally had to be cast and, and done in, this, in the local city can now be done remotely. And that's Source Connect enables that. If you want to get into using Source Connect, if you want to be familiar with it, you want to start playing around with it, head over to source-elements.com and sign up. Get your account started, get the 15-day free trial, watch the tutorials, absorb all the learning content there, and get started so that you understand how it works and uh, you'll be ready when that next job comes along that says must have Source Connect. Thanks for listening. Thanks for sponsoring us. And we'll be back to wrap up right after this. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez. And you're enjoying Dan and George on The Voice of Our Body Shop. All righty. Well, that was a rush hour of <laughs> voiceover tips. It's always Great a fire stuff. hose with Mark. Yeah. <sighs> Fires of knowledge. Absolutely. Uh, let's see here. Next week on this very show, we'll have Tech Talk number 86, mm -hmm. which is an hour of just amazing stuff, all the stuff that we know. Make sure you tune in for that. We'll have that out next week. The promo, I'm not sure which one I'm going to use, but we'll see. You've got a webinar coming up for Twisted Wave tomorrow? Yeah, it's tomorrow. Um, if you do miss it, don't worry. It's all always recorded and available for pay uh, video on demand um, that you can catch later. But either way, whether you watch it live and show up tomorrow at 3 p.m. Pacific time, that's September 6th, or if you missed it and you want to catch it in reruns, they're always going to be at the same place, georgethe.tech slash webinars. Alrighty. And that one's going to be on audiobook narrating using Twisted Wave. Excellent. Twist Wave, great for long format narration. Great program for that. Uh, we need to thank our donors of the week, of which there are many, many, like 949 Designs. Jonathan Grant. Casey Clack. Christopher Epperson. Sarah Borges. Philip Sapir. Tom Pinto. Shelley Avellino. Brian Page. Patty Gibbons. Rob Ryder. Greg Thomas. A Doctor Voice. Antland Productions. Shanna Pennington Baird, Martha Kahn, Don Griffith, Trey Mosley, Diana Birdsall, and Sandra, Sandra Manwiller. Manwiller. All righty. Uh, thanks to our sponsors, Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials, VoiceOver Extra, Source Elements, VOHeroes.com, VoiceActorWebsites.com, JMC Demos, and World Voices. Dot org, the Industry Association of Freelance Voice Talent. Uh, thanks to Jeff Holman. Lots of questions tonight. We love it. We love it when people are, are tuning in when we do it live and give us those live, you know, in real time questions. Uh, so thanks to Jeff for doing all that great work there. Uh, Sue Merlino, hopefully things are a little cooler where she is, our technical director. <laughs> Uh, let's say it's down. To, oh, it's down to a hundred here in my backyard. So it's cooling off <laughs> just a little bit. Thanks Sue for a great job tonight. And of course, Lee Penny just for being Lee Penny. Well, you know, the voiceover business ain't easy. 
But we're here to help you with your home studio and bringing you the people that can give you all the great tips and making sure you are the best you can be as a voice actor. Uh, in the meantime, it really comes down to this. If you if it sounds good, it is good. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is voiceover. Body shot. Or VO. B.S. Have a great week, everybody. We'll see you next time. Stay cool. Bye.